Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Guilty as Charged podcast. Excited today for a very special guest to join me, uh, Mr. Zion Johnson, first round pick of the Chargers, right guard number 77. Zion, thanks for taking the time to join me, man. How are you today? Hey, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. I don't know if you can see, uh, have your draft picture up here. So uh, we were big Zion fans, uh, obviously coming into the draft process. So very excited that uh, the Chargers were uh, able to snag you. Had to get out of the way. You know, podcast listeners know uh, big fans of yours. So appreciate you ho- hopping on today. Um, obviously, your rookie season coming down to the, the, the final stretches here. You know, playoff push, uh, you know, about to uh, start up next week. Uh, what's the what's the mindset for you, you know, as you kind of close out your rookie season here? Honestly, just take advantage of the, of the opportunity. You know, I've had the the chance to talk to some guys in the locker room and, you know, going to the playoffs is hard. Like I've talked to guys that have been in the league for seven years, five years, six years, and uh, have only been in the playoffs once or haven't been at all and that sort of thing. So um, I think the the key here is to take advantage of the opportunity and not take any of the games lightly. Yeah, I love that mindset. Obviously, you know, you got Corey next to you, probably in the playoffs every single year up in Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, Keenan's only been to the playoffs, you know, three times. It was the, the first playoff trip for the Chargers since 2018. So, you know, I think that's the right mindset to have, and I'm glad you guys are kind of, you know, having that dialogue right now. Absolutely. But with that being said, you know, we've got one one more game in the regular season, and we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. You know, like I said, the NFL is unforgiving. You know, every team we play, uh, whether they have a great record or not so great record, they're they're good teams, uh, especially this team we're playing. You know, they have a good defense. And the last time we played them, you know, we didn't really play up to our standard. But, you know, uh, approaching this game, you know, we're just going to go all out and you know, try to go show, like, what our potential is as an offense. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. I, you know, I've uh... – Really love the way you guys have been running the football recently. You know, obviously kind of uh, came to a head with, you know, Austin Eckler getting that big touchdown last week. What do you feel like has been kind of the the biggest difference, if you will, over the last few weeks? Have you been able to kind of, you know, gather some momentum up front in the in the run game in particular? We, we really focused on it. We've made it an emphasis in practice, especially in the red zone to run the ball. And, and to score, finish in the end zone. So, like, even today when we have our red zone period, the whole O-line, we practice running all the way to the goal line and through the goal line because the intention of every play is to score. Yeah, I love to hear that. And from my – from, again, very limited, you know, sense here, but it, it kind of seems like you guys are doing more power concepts recently versus, you know, last year was a lot of, you know, wide zone action, particularly, you know, with, like, Rashawn Slater and Corey and, and Matt and all those guys. Is that accurate? Have you guys been doing more power concepts or, or how have you kind of seen the, the the scheme kind of come together over the last few weeks too? Oh, I would say that probably that's probably true, but it really goes back to the defenses we're playing. We're playing defenses where, you know, they're lining up in five across looks, whether it's like a penny or a jam look or so for us. And when you get those looks, it's probably best to gap them out. You know, you, you get extra numbers and good looks. So um, I mean, that's really what it is at the end of the day, but we feel confident, you know, running any runs, you know, um, I can't, was it last week or maybe in the Colts game, like we ran a, a wide zone play on the goal line, uh, mm-hmm. spontaneous and scored, you know, Eck got in there. So um, we, we feel confident, you know, expanding our offense and then running different schemes. Yeah. I, I think obviously having Corey next to you is, is probably a big benefit and, and kind of switching things up. I want to highlight, uh, you know, your kind of uh, working relationship, if you will, with Trey. Obviously, Trey's kind of had some some ups and downs with some injuries. How have you kind of, you know, uh, worked through things with him throughout your rookie season? And obviously, you know, Foster kind of getting in there a little bit. How's that process been, And you know, working with the right tackles this season? I mean, Trey has helped me out a lot, you know, um, even – by pointing out some of my deficits and helping me work at some of those things. Um, you know, he, he's really a great guy to play next to. And, and on top of that, he's just tough. Like he, he's had some, some, some things going on during the season where he hasn't been able to play in certain games. And he always comes back with a good attitude, ready to roll. And when, when you, when you play next to a guy who's older and has that mentality, it kind of rubs off on you and makes you feel like, Hey, you know, no matter what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give it up all, I'm going to give it all up for the team, no matter what. And then, uh, you know, Foster you know, coming in, he, he's done a great job. And 
uh, we have a good relationship, good chemistry, and we've had the ability to work together um, to j just get chemistry in our sets and in the run game and uh, just great guys, both of them. Yeah, I love to hear that. And, you you know, you mentioned chemistry. Obviously, you and Jamari uh, trained together leading up to the draft. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of, you know, he was drafted, obviously, to be, you know, more of a guard that gets, you know, kind of put out on an island at left tackle. Uh, what have you seen from him in particular as he, as he's kind of, you know, taken on that task of becoming, you know, uh, Justin Herbert's blindside protector this season? I mean, I feel like... I feel like he was kind of underrated a lot. You know, I, I talk to him all the time because people forget he was the left tackle for Georgia, the national champions last year, yeah. and was was very good at doing that. So, you know, I, I think, you know, no matter where he was drafted, you know, I know that Luke and all of us know that he's a great player and that, you know, he comes to work every day with that attitude to get better. And, uh, you know, when, when Rashawn went down, we none of us felt like, oh, man, like, this is going to be rough or anything like that. We had that faith in him and faith in everybody who's had to step up that we could go out and get a win. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, I'm excited to see what this, what everything kind of looks like when Rashawn uh, hopefully comes back, you know, uh, in a couple of weeks or, or maybe sooner. I don't know if you can say uh, anything there. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Good can't poker really, face. Good really poker speak, face. I can't really speak to that. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, but, but on 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 that, you know, I I might be joining him as a reptile owner, but we'll see. Oh, you you uh, can uh, uh shoot, I forget the specific uh, name that he had. The uh, not not the bearded dragon, the turtle. Toys. Oh, nice. Uh, very cool, very cool. Um, I want to ask you a little bit here because obviously, you know, you, when you were drafted, I, I remember you talking about the importance of protecting Justin Herbert and, um, you know, being able to play with a guy like him. Does it ever get kind of um, are you, like you ever awestruck at the things he's able to do with his arm talent and able you know like last week this throw to Mike Williams you know the week before that to you know Mike Williams is it, does it ever get kind of awestruck you know watching him work in practice and, and every every single week on Sundays? It, it used to be, but now it's just like he's different. You just come yeah. to the realization he's different, and like uh, you almost expect those things, no matter how great they are, like. He's just a different guy. And, you know, some of the things he's been able to do is amazing. And, uh, you know, that's our fearless leader. So, yeah, it's been uh, as a fan of the team, obviously, it's been fun to watch him, you know, continue to take more ownership of this uh, of this team and of this offense and, and obviously working with guys like yourself as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, Zion, I uh, I appreciate your time, man. Um, you know, really looking forward to seeing you continue to grow into this uh, into this position with the Chargers, and uh, wish you guys nothing but success in the playoff push, and obviously, uh, you know, uh, continued health throughout your journey in the NFL uh, as well. Thank you, I appreciate that, and thank you for talking with me. Yeah, all right, Zion, thanks, man. We'll uh, we'll we'll catch up soon, I'm sure. Oh, okay, sounds good. Keep going.